What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I appreciate you stopping by, spending a few minutes of your time with me today. I want you to meet two girls that are really special to me, okay? That's Hex. <laughs> My bad. That's Serenity. What's up, girl? I don't know why I did that. I just wanted to show you the dogs, you know what I mean? I just like the dog, okay? Look. Because of the general state of the world, when you turn on the news or the TV and stuff, you know, the stuff that you see everywhere, because of the general state of the world, a lot of people are afraid, especially in America, it seems like. And maybe that's just because I live here. I don't know. But a lot of people are afraid that what they're seeing happening on the world stage is the fall of America as you know it. That soon enough, America will just no longer exist. Okay? That's a very scary thing for a lot of people right now. A lot of people think that right now America is under attack and that it's going to fall and then be taken over by hostile forces who will basically, you know, put us under martial law. They'll see tanks in the streets and armed police everywhere or else they'll see complete anarchy and the whole country's just going to go to shit. The world's going to end. That's real scary for a lot of people. But I'm not really worried about it. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and what do I mean? I'm, I'm not really worried about it. Do I mean that I don't think it's going to happen or what? No, I mean, I'm really not worried about it. Like, either way it falls, I believe that I'll be okay. You know, it's scary because cause people see all sorts of things being challenged. Like, um, when they see in their mind, when they envision the collapse of the world as they know it, they see this as a great goodbye to a lot of things that they believe to be true that turn out to be imaginary, like your human rights. If you're not willing to fight for your human rights, then your human rights do not exist. Or if you do not have someone who is backing you up, if you don't have a whole gang or a whole government to come and protect your ass and say, no, he has human rights. Don't touch him. He's ours. You see what I'm saying? So a lot of people are afraid of this thing being stripped away from them. All of these things that they have come to know as normal, disappearing, that can be a really scary thing, but I'm not worried about it, dude. I've been to prison before. I've had everything taken from me. I've never owned property. I've never owned a car. The only thing I've ever owned is that dog right there. And this camera and that computer. So I'm used to not having things. And I had everything taken from me when I went to prison, including a lot of the things that I thought were my human rights. Those were taken from me by the same motherfuckers that claim to award me these human rights. You see what I'm saying? So human rights, a lot of them are not real. A lot of them are only real while you're willing to stand up and fight for those things. You know what I'm saying? Or else somebody's going to come through and take it from you. And say that it's their right to do so. But listen, when I went to prison, I found a freedom even while I was in prison. That's why I'm saying I'm not worried. Because it doesn't matter to me what happens out here. Because none of it's mine. I didn't come here with this. You, you can do whatever you want to with it. Blow it up. Do whatever you want to. It's yours. Have it. You can have it. I know that freedom's not out there. I met a lot of good people in prison, and guess what? I had a lot of good times. I found some sort of freedom there. And the only way that it happened is because when you go to prison, you sort of have to accept that this is your new world, okay? Like, you can try to escape if you want to. It's going to be really difficult. I'm not saying that it's impossible 
But even if you do escape, it's probably only going to be temporary because there's going to be a whole lot of people looking for you, right? And they're going to put you right back in there and then they're going to tell you that you have to stay longer, probably three to five years longer than you did in the first place. So now you have to deal with that. But what if you have life? Huh? With a certain mindset, you might as well kill yourself. And a lot of people do when they go to prison. And they don't even have life sentences. A lot of people just kill themselves. It's crazy to me because a lot of people out here in the outside world act like they're in prison. And I think that it would perhaps be a good thing if you did go to fucking prison. Then maybe you'd learn something. you learn how to accept your situation. Because that's what you have to do when you go to prison, right? Like, you're not really getting out. You're here for a set amount of time. What are you going to do? Are you going to sit here and, and get all depressed and, and wonder what it could be like if you never would have came, what you should have done different? None of that shit matters. You did it, and now you're here. You might as well accept it and make the best out of a bad situation. Make some friends. Play cards. Have fun. Create memories. Fight if you like to fight. You know what I mean? Learn something. Read books. It's a great opportunity for you to see how fucked up you are when you go to prison. It's a great opportunity for you to take an honest look at yourself and see how you took advantage of people, right? To see the wrongs that you've done in your life and be honest about it. Take an honest moral inventory and figure out how the fuck you ended up in prison. And then make an agreement with yourself to stop doing that shit when they let you out of here. And I know that this quarantine idea is not literally prison, but for a lot of people, they're talking about it like it's prison. You should treat it like it's prison and accept your circumstance and learn to deal with it. Hmm? Maybe you can grow from this whole experience, you know? Rather than thinking of yourself in prison, really where you're at is a univ-fucking-versity. You learn a lot when you go to prison. I saw people making portable cell phone battery chargers out of solar power calculators. Huh? Yeah. I've seen people go to prison with nothing, come out basically a certified lawyer in prison because they totally accepted where they were at and say, you know what, I'm going to take this opportunity to grow and to evolve, become a better version of who I am. Hmm? So I don't repeat the same mistakes. A lot of people, they don't want to do that. They just want to hide. They want to hide behind that mask. Know what I mean? <sighs> I do kind of want to talk to you about that mask real quick, though, because personally, I don't really wear the mask. And it's just a personal preference. I'm not comfortable wearing the mask. It, it literally rubs me the wrong way. You know what I mean? I just haven't found one that's comfortable or something. But I just don't enjoy wearing the mask. I don't feel like I can breathe properly. Just for a lot of different reasons, I don't like wearing the mask. Okay, so I seldom wear it. But I'm in contact with people wearing the mask all the time. Like, I had to work at in a new place over the last couple weeks, and everyone there had on a mask, so I could only see their eyes up. And all you really hear are bad things about these masks, right? Um or bad things in association with the mask. But I want to sort of give you a, a positive about the mask, something that I find actually quite interesting, quite beautiful about these masks, okay? Now, what I noticed was that through my interactions with people when they're wearing the mask, um, it is sort of less intimate or less personal. It seems like there is an extra little bit of distance between us when we're wearing masks, right? So I do kind of experience that, but I'm doing my best to kind of break through that, right? All I can see is people's eyes, and my mind sort of generates a face for them in my imagination. Like, I sort of imagine what they would look like if they didn't have the mask on based on this portion of their face. And this just sort of happens naturally. I feel like my mind is subconsciously generating a face. You know what I mean? 
And then like at some point throughout the day, they will pull down the mask and I'll see their face and be like, what the fuck? It really throws me for a loop. It's like, that is not what I was expecting at all. And I'm pleasantly taken aback a lot of the times. And it's funny when people wear masks because it's like you're forced to maintain eye contact, right? If you're going to talk to someone directly and you can't hear them because the mask muffles their voice, you're kind of forced to look at them. And the only sort of gauge you have for communication is their eyes. So you're looking into their eyes all the time, right? And I don't care who you are. A lot of people are shallow, right? Like a lot of people judge people based on their appearance, call people ugly and and sometimes they will have less contact with people that they don't see as visually pleasing. But I don't care who you are, your eyes are beautiful. I could spend all day looking into your eyes. Like, look at my eyes, bro. Eyes are weird. No matter who you are, your eyes are magnificent, okay? So, you can see something, you can see like the life in a person's eyes and it really is like an intimate thing, making eye contact with a person where you're talking to them. And because of this, it's like I'm identifying this thing and so they may take off their mask and if they're not, say, like handsome or pretty in like a classical or traditional sense, the contact that I've been making with them sort of allows them to be handsome or beautiful anyway. Like it, it goes beyond their appearance because I've been looking into their eyes and trying to get to know them to reveal what's behind the mask. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, it's like certain people, they don't want you to talk to them. Like you have to earn the right to talk to them. And that's not a bad thing. A lot of us need to be more assertive or more protective with our personal energy and who we're in contact with because we don't know these people. We don't know what they believe in. We don't want them just, you know, putting evil, evil seeds in our mind and shit like this. So we don't necessarily need to talk to everybody, right? And not everybody has the right to just have a great intimate conversation with you. So you may put on the mask as like, you know, I don't really want to talk right now. But then as I talk to someone, it's like we get to a certain point where they're like, they pull down the mask and they show me their face and they like reveal this thing to me. And it's beautiful, no matter what's actually behind the mask, the fact that they take down the mask and allow me to see their face is a beautiful thing and that face is beautiful. <laughs> and so in a way that mask is like, is, is a beautiful thing and it sort of allows you to realize that some things are meant to be private, some things should be private, that there should be a distinction between public and private. You know what I mean? And I think that that's a great thing. Um, and I'm not saying that I'm going to start wearing the mask, you know, and it's not really necessary. Most of us wear a mask every single day with, you know, before the coronavirus and stuff. But, um, you know, anyway, I just wanted to stop by and talk to you guys for a little bit, share some of my thoughts with you. Um, I really feel like I'm, I'm growing with this YouTube channel. Like, I feel like I'm really getting to know myself. I'm working on accepting myself my thoughts, how they are, and expressing those and sharing those because sometimes I'm afraid to tell people how I feel. I don't want to be judged. I don't want you to tell me I'm crazy or that I'm stupid, that I sound like an idiot. I don't want you to insult my life or my mind, you know, for some reason. Um, but I'm working on getting over that, like exposing myself, kind of. Um, so I appreciate you being here with me for that, supporting me through that. Um, you know, and I hope that you're doing well. I hope that you're feeling good and really focusing on what's important to you. Um, and what's important to me has changed over the years. This is what I'll leave you with today. Um, sometimes I feel like it's a beautiful thing, this journey that I'm on, this path that I'm on, right? But sometimes it becomes like an obsession. I'm obsessed with certain things. Like I'm obsessed with certain aspects of spirituality or my spirituality. Like I really want to um, do nothing other than sit here and explore myself sometimes, right? And um, dissect every bit of life searching for the greater meaning of it all. And I wonder if this becomes a distraction, right? Sometimes, if it becomes a distraction, it becomes an attachment, right? If you become too involved in 
the idea of spiritual awakening. It could be detrimental. Balance is needed because if I start to put all of my effort into that, into this idea, essentially, I will begin to ignore the reality of my situation. I will begin to neglect people in my life, right? And a lot of the times when we get on this spiritual path, a lot of us, uh, you know, it's like we were becoming more conscious. We're becoming more aware of ourselves and our surroundings, our behaviors, our thoughts. We're also becoming aware of the great unconsciousness that is present all over the globe, right? And we get obsessed with this idea that we are conscious and that there are a lot of other people that won't see things the way that we see things and we will just label them as being unconscious. But this is like a distraction. This is like a huge barrier because what if your wife is unconscious? What if your child is unconscious? What if your best friend is unconscious? And you just sort of use that as a label to sort of neglect what's really going on. And what's really going on is maybe you're having an issue communicating with that person. Maybe you don't know how to express yourself correctly to get your point across, right? Maybe you're not taking enough time to try to get to understand that person and see things from their point of view and you're really the one that's unconscious. And it's because you've been so distracted in this idea of spiritual awakening. That's sort of, I've been dealing with that right now and it's like, damn, because I have to draw a line, a distinction between somewhere like, like, am I, am I living in a fantasy? When I get too deep into the idea of spiritual awakening, they say there's a fine line between spiritual awakening and psychosis. And sometimes I feel like I'm, I'm, you know, on that line. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm losing it a little bit sometimes, you know. But I really get distracted. And it seems like when you get distracted by by spirituality, when you become obsessed with it, it's really no different than becoming obsessed with materialism, material things. Because you get too obsessed with, with the material world, you will neglect the spiritual world. But if you get too obsessed with the spiritual world, you will neglect the physical world and neglect the people around you and what's important in your life, like your family, right? How many people have, have went on this spiritual awakening and then just abandoned their family? Right? And how many books tell you this? Like the Bible says that you're going to have to leave behind everything, including your parents, including your children. Okay? To, to really follow Jesus or whatever. But what does that mean? Hmm? It means you have to get rid of that old image of them. You think that they're just wrong and that you're just right. Really what it is, you haven't taken the time to understand that person or something, you know? Anyway, though, until next time, I hope you continue to free your mind.